Welcome to the series of Azure ML Toolbox video tutorials. Today I am going to talk about partition and sample control in Azure ML. This control creates multiple partitions of a data set based on sampling. This control is very useful when dividing your data into multiple subsections of the same size or separating data into groups and then working with data from a specific group. It can also be used for sampling and creating a smaller data set for testing. So let's see how to configure partition and sample control to perform these tasks. The first mode in partition and sample is assigned to folds. This is used to split data into partitions. Now I will connect the data set to the input port of partition and sample control. Automobile price data has been connected to the control. So by using assign to folds method, you can divide the data set into subsets of the data. You can also create a custom number of folds for cross validation. Now let's go to the properties pane of partition and sample control. Check the use replacement in the partitioning option if you want the sampled row to be put back into the pool of rows for potential reuse. As a result, the same row might be assigned to several folds. But if you don't select this option, then each row will be assigned to exactly one fold. I won't select this option. Then select the option randomize split if you want the rows to be randomly chosen. If you do not select this option, rows are assigned to the folds by using round robin method. This option is selected by default. For random seed, type an integer to use as a seed value. This option is important if you want the rows to be divided in the same way every time. Otherwise, the default value of zero means a random starting seed will be used. Below that, specify the partitioner method, which has two options, partition evenly and partition with customized proportions. If you select first option, an equal number of rows are assigned to each partition and then specify the number of folds to split evenly in the text box given below. If you select second option in partitioner method, then provide a comma separated list that indicates the size of each partition. You can type the partition sizes by clicking on the text box given below. For example, I will divide the data into three partitions. The first partition will be 0.6, the second partition will be 0.2, and the third partition will be 0.2. Keep in mind that sum of all the partition sizes must add up to exactly one. If it is less than one, Azure ML will create one extra partition automatically and if it is more than one, an error will be raised. Below that, select the option Stratified Split if you want the rows to be stratified when split. If you choose this option, you have to select a strata column. Click on Launch Column Selector to select the strata column. I'm selecting Price Column as the strata column. And now run the experiment. The green tick mark ensures that the module outputs multiple data sets partitioned using the rules you specified. To verify if the data is properly sampled into partitions, we have to configure the next option in partition and sample, which is pick fold. If you want to use data from a predefined partition, then choose pick fold option from partition and sample mode. You must have two partition and sample controls for this. The previous partition and sample module must have used assign to folds option to generate some n number of partitions. In our case, we have created three partitions. In the second partition and sample control, select pick fold mode and specify which fold to be sampled from, select a partition to use by typing its index. Indices are one based. For example, if you have divided the data set into three parts, the available indices would be one, two, and three. You can also type the index of a certain fold and then select the option, pick complement of the selected fold to get everything but the data in the selected fold. 
If the previous instance of the partition and sample module created multiple partitions, you can connect additional copies of the partition and sample module to handle each partition. I will get two more partition and sample controls to show three different partitions. In the first partition and sample control, I have index as 1, which would have partition of size 0 0.6. Let's comment on this control so that we don't create any confusion afterwards. You can add the comment to a control by double clicking on it and write the comment here. Partition size 0 0.6 Similarly, for this partition and sample control, I will select pick fold and then I will type second index here which will hold the partition size 0 0.2. So I will comment it here, partition size 0 0.2. Similarly, for this partition and sample, I will select pick fold and type index 3 over here which would hold partition size of 0 0.2 and I'll comment it over here in order to see the three different partitions created by first partition and sample control we will connect the output of first partition and sample control to these three partition and sample controls and run the experiment each control outputs a single data set containing only the rows assigned to that fold so let's see the output of the first partition size. This is the 60% of automobile price data which have 188 rows. The second partition contains one row which is 20% of the partition size and the third partition size was also 0 0.2 which is 20% of automobile price data and it has 16 rows. The difference between the second and third partition is because we have selected the strata column as price in the first partition and sample control. So if we don't select any strata column then let's see how the output looks like. So let's see the output of first partition. It contains 123 rows, which is 60% part of automobile price data. The second partition contains 41 rows, which is 20% of the automobile price data. And third partition contains 41 rows, which is 20% of the automobile price data. Moving ahead, let's see the next option of partition and sample control for which I will delete all these partition and sample controls. The next option is head. This will give you only the first n rows from the data set. This option is useful if you want to test an experiment on a small number of rows and don't need the data to be balanced or sampled in any way. Below that, type the number of rows to select. I will type 5 over here. It should return 5 rows. Now run the experiment. This option outputs a single data set containing only the specified number of rows. The rows are always read from the top of the data set. So let's verify this. We can see that the result contains only 5 rows. Now let's talk about the last option in partition or sample mode which is sampling. With this option you can perform simple random sampling or stratified sampling. This is useful if you want to create a smaller representative sample dataset for testing. 
Below that we have to mention rate of sampling. Type a value between 0 and 1 that indicates the percentage of rows from the source data set that should be included in the output data set. I will type 0 0.5 here which means the sampling rate should be 50%. The rows of the input data set are shuffled and selectively put into the output data set according to the specified ratio. For random seed for sampling, type an integer to use as a seed value. This option is important if you want the rows to be divided in the same way every time. Otherwise, the default value of 0 means that a random starting seed will be used. Select stratified split for sampling if it is important that the rows in the dataset should be divided evenly by some key column before sampling. If you choose true, then you will have to select a strata column like we did in the assign to folds method. I will select false option in this field and run the experiment. Let's see the output results. There are 103 rows in the output which means we have 50% of the data in the output. So this is how partition and sample control works. Thank you.